Welcome to the Writer Dojo with your hosts, Steve Diamond. That's me. And Larry Correa. Via con Dios. Today's episode, What's in a Name? Or The Importance of Character Names. Everybody, welcome back to the Writer Dojo. Today's episode, we're going to talk about the importance of character names. Uh, real quick, thank you all for sticking with us in our episode last week where we uh, we were doing kind of a weird tech demo to see how our how our equipment held up. Um, I was having a bad day. Uh, I've had a bad week, and and so we were just checking everything. And you know, at some point, we'll probably have to record again. Uh, remotely because Larry lives on a mountain and we live in Utah and there's snow here. Oh man, you guys got to understand when it snows at my place, it snows. I, I live in the valley next to a ski resort. We have a ski resort right next to us for a reason. Yeah. it's It snows a lot where I live. So there's going to be some parts of the winter where I just can't make it down here to record. So that was a tech demo. Uh, I know I sounded a little tinny. I even actually had a blanket over my head the entire time. I had a blank. Me and my microphone were under a blanket while we recorded. And Jack actually got a great picture of that. We'll have to share that on the page. Yeah, we've got screen caps of us all with like towels and blankets over our head, staring menacingly into the cameras. I actually look a lot like a terrorist. Like I'm making, I'm about to like release my list of demands. So we'll, we'll, we'll get that posted on the Facebook we'll page. We'll release all waffle makers to the people. <laughs> Freedom for Krasnovian partisans. <laughs> Sorry. I, I've been, uh, so, like all my accents are feeling Russian. I've been listening to the, uh, to the audio book of servants of war for research purposes. And, uh, one dude, our readers rad. Uh, and listening to him go through all these different accents, whether it's straight up Russian or kind of Transylvanian or, or like the, the Jewish accent that he does, that dude does a really good job. I'm super pleased with it. Yeah. I've actually not listened to it yet, but I'm going to listen to it this week because we are, uh, happy to say there's going to be another one of those books, uh, yeah. and the second book of the age of the Ravens, Steve and I are in the, um, process of brainstorming it now. Mm -hmm. Now. What's interesting about some of this, and 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 I'll try to make it seem like this was a natural segue into what our topic is: uh, the importance of character names. And I remember when we were when we were doing all of the the character naming conventions and stuff for for uh, for this series. Uh, and you and I were joking right before the show about this a little bit, and that's that when it comes to to naming things, this is hard. And there has to be purpose behind it. Um, but one of the things I learned very quickly is that when, when I was looking at Russian names, dude, they're all the same. They all sound the same. <laughs> well, that's why you're we joking with the, the importance of character names as we were brainstorming book two in the Age of Ravens. Uh, when you've got stuff like, you know, Slavo Slav, Slobodan Slavo Slav. Slavovich or Slavomir. Slavikov. Slavikov. Slavikov von Slavomir. And it like kind of like really, you know, got in there. Uh, yeah. So what actually brought this about is we ran for Halloween a uh, role playing game. Or I ran a role playing game. I did a one off for uh, Aliens. You know, so we just basically did the plot kind of, you know, like a year after, you know, the, 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 the Aliens movie. And, and I just did a horror game, right? Yeah. But I, I created... It would have been year 2181, by my estimation. Hey, that's that's good. <laughs> and so I went through and I created 20 NPCs that these guys would like, each one would pick a character. And I killed all but like six of them. I think six lived at the end. So I killed 14 out of the 20. But as I was coming up with names, I needed to come up with names. So I used that fantasy name generator, you know, but you can put in different ethnicities and it'll give you names. And so I just did 20 and I, w I went through and I jumped through a bunch of different ethnic groups and... Uh, religious groups and they got a bunch of different names it was a very diverse game it actually really was uh and then i didn't write any character stuff but the interesting <laughs> and the reason that got me thinking about this topic is i was getting these 20 names i was just going down the list and picking names that were cool however each name that i picked immediately as i was writing it down and i had to put stats a stat block down for the character uh, i left it very vague but i just gave them their basic stats for each one i picked that name alone painted a picture in my mind of what that character would be like. Uh, like for one of the names was uh, was an, was an American name was Odin Hendricks. Oh, and as soon as you said that, like literally the entire group goes, "Well, that dude only has one eye for a reason." <laughs> you know, we started thinking about it, and and within 
gosh, 30 seconds. Like we all knew who he was. We all know what he was. We all knew who we all knew how he talked. Well, that guy was a colonial Marine, obviously. Oh, obviously. Yeah. And it just worked out that way. So everybody had, uh, I mean, it just, I had, uh, one of the, one of the character that Pat played with was, uh, came up with Axel Abrams. And that just said, that just screamed old guy who is a ship's engineer. Just immediately. It just painted that picture. Um, well, you were Hector Oriano. Hector. Yeah, the random, the random draw of characters. Literally, there was a, a stack of paper. I picked it out, and I end up with the one Hispanic guy. The guy who speaks perfect. The guy Spanish. who speaks Spanish yeah. ends up with the Hispanic guy. Well, I like, think that we had two of you guys that uh, spoke. Yeah, me and Josh. Yeah, Josh. Josh is fluent in Spanish too, and Josh wound up with a guy named Jawar Al Hassan. Yeah, and uh, actually, that's the best he ever, uh, you know, he's ever rolled in his life. But it was just an it was an interesting experiment to me how just just a name alone with just name alone would suggest the stat block, and that stat block suggested the character. So where, where's the um. Where's this fantasy name generator? Was it a specific I, site? I just Googled uh, fantasy name generator. Right. I've been using it for years, but it's it's got hundreds of different categories on it. And you can put in like, I would like names from Uzbekistan and it will give you Uzbekistan names. Now, how accurate they are, I don't know. It's, uh, you hey, know. If you use it for a fantasy series, who cares? Yeah, using it for a fantasy series, it doesn't really matter. Because like, I've used it for um, uh, groups that I am familiar with and some of them aren't so great. Actually, it's kind of funny because they have Mormon names on there. <laughs> Which, here's an actually. It's I, a I, bunch of Levi's and Moroni's. Well, not only that, but like Lavars and Levans and you know how like Utah likes to make up weird names. Uh, I have a theory on why Utah is that way though. Why is this? Uh, it's when you have a big family. Uh, and you have like, so, so the husband had 11 brothers and sisters and the wife had eight brothers and sisters and they're having kids, but they don't want to like steal all the other family names. And by that point, everybody named like John, Jake, uh, you know, the, the, you know, Jack, <laughs> Jim, all the normal names have been taken. Everyone has J names apparently. Yeah. So that's how you went. That's how you wind it. Well, it is actually in my family, but I mean, as you've noticed, <laughs> but then you, uh, that's how you wind up with your Lavars and your Laverkins. <laughs> we don't have that as much now, but for a while there, Utah was really kind of crazy with names. Shonda, Lashanda. Yeah, no, we actually do the same thing. Uh, yeah, but these are all these are all like super white Mormon names, believe it or not. Well, when I was on my mission in Alabama, oh, I, uh, I was in Birmingham in the projects, and uh, I would meet people you know, from the inner city that had names like that, but they were the same exact names I'd get in Delta, Utah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two diametrically different cultures, but oh, the same. so different. Actually, we did met a, we met a kid named uh, Lamangelo. It was literally spelled Lemon Jello. Oh. L-E-M-O-N-J-E-L-L-O, and his see, mom named him Lamangelo. This is just cruel. Yeah. Now, see, if you... <laughs> this is the this is the character name that the main character in my series would make fun of. Yeah. But, okay, so so we got a little diverged there, but... Uh, so, so, so names are a cultural thing, and every culture is going to have a different... And we'll get into fantasy names and sci-fi naming conventions and, and where you're just creating everything from scratch, that kind of thing. But kind of what I'm getting at right now for the importance of this is when you're creating a character, finding names that are memorable and evocative. Mm -hmm. So, like, I come up with an idea. I say this guy's name. It paints a picture immediately. You see this really when in over-the-top action stuff. Yeah. You know, Jack Danger, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they actually had a uh, play on that in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Mm -hmm. There was a federal agent named Jack Danger. And then they met him and it was like, he actually goes by Jackie. And it's actually pronounced Donger. It's Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's, so it went from Jack Danger. And everybody's all excited to meet Jack Danger to Jackie Donger. You know, and it just, but the, you see the, the names just automatically paint a picture. Oh, at, at, uh, at my old job. Uh, we, we hired this guy, his name was John Wick, <laughs> except when he got to work, he said, he's like, it's pronounced Wyke. And we all just kind of went, Oh, well, that's too bad. Can we call you John Wick? And he's like, no. It's like, well, crap. Which is funny. Cause there was a, there was a, if you're a gamer nerd, there's John Wick, the game developer Yeah, that predates John Wick, the movies by yeah. a lot of years. Yeah. I met him actually. Yeah, at Gen Con. Yeah, pretty nice guy. Yeah. It's just funny, though, because there's like this weird names automatically hit a, a thing. It may paint a picture. Not always. Sometimes you meet people in real life where the name just doesn't match the person at all. Mm -hmm. um, 
And sometimes you'll have that with characters too. And that's the beauty of nicknames. Yeah. You know? Well, I, yeah. So I do want to come back to the nickname part. I think we'll come back to that in the second half of the episode because I, um, both you and I have used that, that very specific naming convention to portray certain things. Um, I've seen you do it and I know I do it. Uh, and some other authors who we both really like do it. But I want to talk first about kind of the why. Why? Why do, why do we need to have these, as you were saying, these memorable evocative names? Why? I think a lot of it is strength of character. And so if you think about all the characters you remember from every book, of, every work of fiction you've ever consumed, think about the names that stick with you. You know, usually if it's a generic name, it's less likely to stick with you. You know, it slides off you. It slides off your conscience. Like sometimes when you're uh, writing a book and you have a scene where you introduce a bunch of characters, if their names are all just kind of generic and there's nothing that really strikes in the reader's mind, you're just going to kind of skim that. And it's like, this is Peterson and Christensen and Johnson and and Smith, <laughs> you know, and you introduce the, the squad. That's the most generic law firm in the history of the world. Yeah, you introduce the squad and then <laughs> and then when Peterson or Johnson or Smith dies later on, I don't, I don't care. I, I didn't connect with them. It just slid off me. I always care about Johnson. <laughs> we, we discovered that under pressure when Steve's coming up with names for role-playing games, it was Johnson and Butts. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I revert to my inner 12-year-old. Yeah, it's like, it's just basically Steve would be like, so what's this, guy, what's this guy's name, Steve? And he'd be like, because oh, he hadn't written it out, uh, Lieutenant Butts. And we'd be like, oh. <laughs> and that's just how it was. <clears throat> that's Steve's naming conventions that are 12-year-olds. But we, were all, we all remembered Lieutenant Butts. Oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> You sure do. <laughs> and then when I killed him later, you were all sad. We were actually. It was pretty traumatic when Lieutenant Butts died. No, the thing is, though, guys, when you're when you're naming your characters, you don't need to go over the top like Jack Danger, you know, because sometimes it is, some names come off like you're trying too hard. Anybody ever remember that episode of Mystery Science Theater where they did um, they 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 did a show where it was like some big buff blonde guy on a sci-fi show, right? And so throughout, and his he had a name on the on the show that was something like generic Jack Danger kind of thing. But as the episode went on, they kept calling him different names, and they're like Beef Large Huge Slab <laughs> McRib Jaw, you know. Well, I can't remember. It was like brick hard plank. <laughs> and they kept saying names. They had hundreds of them throughout the episode. Uh, so you don't want to go too overboard on that, but you can definitely get strong names. Now, one of the things that I found with this is that um, I find myself paying very close attention to the naming of the characters depending on the genre I'm writing in. Oh, yeah. So. You, like you're saying, you're like, oh, yeah, you know, you don't want to be too over the top. Well, if you're writing in a genre that is kind of over the top. Yeah, sometimes you might want to go over the top. So, again, so the 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 ongoing joke of the eventual story that's going to will itself into existence with me, you know, Sparkle McMurder Princess or whatever the hell. <laughs> like, whatever that name is going to be, her name is going to be over the top. Yeah, no, right? that's, that's calling for over the top. And b because that's the nature of the story. Well, that's what I did in Tom Stranger. Exactly. Yeah, in Tom Stranger, every name is ridiculously over the top. Except Jimmy. Except for Jimmy. It's because his name is just Jimmy Duquesne. It's just, <laughs> but I love it because Duquesne is spelled like Duquesne is what it looks like, which is just funny. But uh, he's just Jimmy the intern. But like his secretary is Muffy Sparkles Wappler. And so, you know, and then like, like one of his, uh, one of his, uh, because he got his three guys that worked for him, he had Beardly McSpetsnaz and, uh, Dirk Hardsack. <laughs> These are his employees, you know, but it just names paint pictures and, and in, the, and in that universe, it's super absurd. So I'm painting an absurd right. picture. So when I introduce a character with an over the top name like that, you just know. Well, you know. Now, both you and I, we love the detective genre. Oh, we absolutely. Both, we're both writing in it or have written in it. And so, again, you think back to these names. Um, Harry Bosch. Great. Bosch. Yeah, Bosch. You know. Great name. You know, not, it's it's strong, it's evocative, um, it, and, and, and the name itself 
within the context of the world and the character actually uh, evokes the name of the of the artist. The Hieronymus. Hieronymus Bosch. Who he's named after. Yeah, and, and so, you know, they, they there's this whole play on the character, who he is and all this stuff. And actually in the books they draw, they actually draw a little bit more upon the, like the painting and the artist and stuff like that in, in, in those themes, right? Yeah. But Detective, Bosch, Spade, you know, you're thinking of these names, Dresden. Oh, Harry Dresden is a great one because it was, uh, he was, um, and what's his middle name? Um, it was another famous wizard. Uh, oh, I, I don't freaking remember. I, I forgot now. But yeah, so but Harry Dresden is a great power name. Mm -hmm. You know, very memorable. People hear that name, they remember it. Um, I, I used it for when I did uh, Hard Magic, I did Jake Sullivan because I was looking for like a gritty, hard-boiled detective, 1930s vibe, tough guy name for a mm -hmm. big tough guy. And and just it just Jake Sullivan just felt like the right name for a big, tough, solid dude. Well, and it kind of gives you that almost that weird, that kind of like that, not weird, but that like hard Irish. Well, yeah, because part of it too is like speaking of cultural stuff. I wanted him to be Irish because mm -hmm. it was 1930s. Uh, the Irish were still catching a lot of crap uh, in, in America for yeah. being for just for being Irish. That was like a disliked minority. Uh, and so I wanted an Irish main character. So I was looking at Irish last names and that one just clicked. Well, and then, you know, Faye. Yeah. So it was like Faye, her real name's Sally Faye Vieira, but actually, and then Vieira is not even a real last name. That's her adopted family. And, and why did it go with Vieira? It just sounds cool. I, I put her in the San Joaquin Valley of California amongst the Portuguese where I grew up and I wanted a Portuguese last name, which is a really common one. And it, that is, but it just, the way that the, the names click together makes it kind of like this good Sally Faye Vieira. It's a good kind of cadence and everybody just calls her Faye, mm -hmm. you know, throughout the series. And that's what she always goes by. And great character. And it just sticks. It's, 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 it's got that good cadence and it's memorable. So well, it's not these days. It's not a, it's not a, a natural or a, a common name anymore. Um, Faye used to be actually a pretty common name. Yeah. In that time frame. Well, I'm named, I'm named Lawrence. Yeah. <laughs> that's my real name. Yeah. Now, you know, I was thinking about this too, like, cause I was, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm writing Werewolf Cop, and uh, you know I finished off the first short story in that. And oddly enough, probably the thing I agonized the most over, not, it was not the story. I don't know what the story for that book is going to be. Yeah. I knew what the story for the short story was going to well, be. Well, you've had that forever. Yeah. yeah. It was the name. I mean, if we, go, if we look back at our text history, there's probably like 30 texts of me saying, how about this name? What about this? Yeah, because you kept sending me like, what about this name? Like, eh. So I ended up coming up with, with the, the name of the character, finally. It all just kind of crashed down on me. Um, so it's Kamari Hicks. And Kamari being the African, an African name. In, in Swahili, it means moon, which it's, it's a werewolf story. So it felt appropriate. Plus, the name sounds cool. Uh, and then Hick, I, I was for the longest time, I was trying to figure out what his last name was. And I kept thinking of African names and then it hit me that, but he's not, he's not African anymore. No, his family's he, American. Yeah. Um, and so I started looking up like famous lawmen from the old West. Cause I love the old West and, uh, John Hicks Adams. And so I saw him and I'm like, Hicks, Hicks. Plus I, I like aliens. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, this is perfect. Kamari Hicks. And Hicks is a good, strong name, and it's one syllable, which I really like for detective-y names. Cade. Cade. That's the one. Yeah, Lutero Cade. Yeah, Lutero Cade is my gritty space cop exactly. detective name. Yep. And so it just, it's easy to say. And, and I think what it comes down to is if I can have Lance Reddick say the name out loud <laughs> and say it like he's a little disgusted with you. That the chief of police uh -huh. is sick of your crap. If 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 he if I can imagine it being said in in that voice, then it's the right name, Bosch. You know, like how he says Bosch Hicks. You know, Cade. <laughs> um, like a little disgusted. Right? So this is the Lance Reddick test. This for is the Lance Reddick test names. for yeah yeah actually. You should probably write that into your uh, integrated cop show. <laughs> it's the Lance Reddick. It's the Lance Reddick test. Is your name good? Well, can you imagine Lance Reddick saying it disgustingly? Yeah. 
Well, it's, and then the because oh, uh, Lucero Kate's partner's last name's Katanga. Yeah. But why why Katanga? Because because I thought it sounded cool, and also is it's, it's a colony planet where people come from basically all over yeah. and got dumped there. And so I, I went for a very wide. I threw a very wide net. Yeah. On naming. All right, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about the importance of namings, the kind of things that we look for. And then I want to, I want to talk again about uh, the use of nicknames and why that can be a very effective tool. We'll be right back. The history of art is the history of civilization itself. With the rise of computers, it wasn't long before humans began to explore using artificial intelligence or AI to generate artwork. Recent breakthroughs have resulted in millions of eager users now racing to create their own art with this new technology. The ability to make anything can be daunting for new users, though. An illustrated guide to AI prompt mastery is intended to serve as a handy reference guide for users, both new and more experienced. Using a unique and whimsical collection of cats, dogs, and other assorted animals, artist author Jack Wilder, that's me, provides users with visual representations of different artists who can serve as inspiration for their own art. Artists interested in improving their ability with AI, fans of art history, or even just fans of cute animals wearing costumes will all find plenty of interesting artwork to peruse. An illustrated guide to AI prompt mastery is a valuable reference to this fascinating new field that is emerging and is helpful for all AI users, whether they are using Midjourney, Dolly, Night Cafe, or Deep Dream Generator. An illustrated guide to AI prompt mastery available now on Bain.com or Amazon. Pick up your copy today. All right, everybody, welcome back. So, first half of, half of the episode, Larry, we were talking about some of the ways we've we've named things, the reasons why we have, uh, and we talked a little bit about detective fiction and, and why we've kind of chosen very specific naming conventions within that genre. Now, for fantasy, though, because, like it or not, the vast majority of our listeners, and actually I do like this, the vast majority of our listeners... Uh, are either going to be writing fantasy or science fiction. Uh, yep. And hopefully horror. Take a drink. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about how the naming, the naming conventions, some of the do's and don'ts within those types of genres. Yeah, that's an interesting one because when you're starting from uh, – because uh, both of these are world building – uh, from scratch, usually. So you're, it's not Earth. So, so far we've talked about, like, Earth names, you know, and we're drawing from different real-life cultures and just putting names together to have a cool effect. But if you're in a science fiction or fantasy setting, you are not bound by the context of our current cultures or where names come from. Now, if you're doing sci-fi that's, like, you know, uh, uh, near-future sci-fi and you want to have, like, this planet got settled by, uh, you know, people from... Space Mormons. Yeah, Space Mormons. And you got people named LeVan. LeVar. <laughs> and Talon, you know, uh. stuff like that. And, and all, the, all the weird names we like out here. But Or, or if you have a planet that's been uh, settled by Brazilians, there's going to be a lot of people named Joao and Maria, you know. Yeah. Paolo. Paolo. And it just depends. But if you get further out where this has its own unique culture... Or fantasy world, uh, and then you got to decide how are you going to do this? How are you going to name people? Now, I think I think the crutch that most authors use for various reasons is they kind of just choose a kind of sort of naming convention for the world that, like the culture, the our world culture that their world is kind of based on, you know, like. Well, well, okay, like Son of the Black Sword. Son of the Black Sword. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. exactly that. So that is a, without giving too much away, come four books in a five book series. Mm. You know, it's spoilers. spoilers. There's characters with names. Well, and all the names are based on uh, India. India, India. And keep in mind that India has like 200 something different subcultures mm. and languages. Uh, so it's a very broad thing to draw from. But that's what I've used. And um, it's actually really interesting because I've got giant lists of names of real people and I pick through the names and I try to figure out what they mean and I try to find ones that click and fit for that for that universe. Uh, and sometimes I'll twist them around and I'll have some fun with that. Other times it's just the sound, what sounds good. And who know that it's kind of surprised me, dude, like the name Neil 
Neil is actually an Indian name. There's a lot of Indians named Neil, and has been for thousands of years. It just really? Also, yeah. Except if I was to call a guy Neil in Son of the Black Sword, <laughs> all my Western readers would immediately be like, what? Yeah, they feel like you phoned it in. Yeah, they'd be like, "What? No, maybe that is actually an Indian name, but I can't, I can't use that for that for that reason. It just wouldn't yeah. feel right." Um, but but that's one where I straight up like built it on an existing universe. I think that's what most people do when they do fantasy. Because um, think about it, realistically, the people in your fantasy world aren't speaking English anyway, right? So whatever they're saying is an approximation. You know what I mean? Um, but you'll see it all the time where they'll have like all the names are based on kind of like pseudo England or Vikings or sometimes Romans or, or ancient Greeks, but they'll, they'll pick something and they'll kind of borrow that. Yeah, I think, I think that there's a danger in getting too creative. Um, I, I, We've all read the books. We've all seen the books, whether sci-fi or fantasy, where it's where the names are seventy-eight letters long yeah. with three hundred apostrophes in them. I, I can't remember them. Like when I read those books, and I've seen, I've read many uh, from different authors, where it'll be a sci-fi book, and they'll have like the alien name is Chikwak Nichnaka Snickerflark Tarkachar, and there's six apostrophes in it, and it's twenty-eight letters long. I'm not going to remember that. No. Not no. at all. It's, okay, the, if, if you've ever worked at a call center or you've ever worked with outsourced teams in India, they, they tell you what their, their Indian name is, and it's usually fairly long, which to them is not a big deal, you know. But for, for the average dumb American, they're like, you can call me John. Well, and we're writing for an American audience. Most of us listening to this podcast are writing to an American audience or you're you writing to an American English audience. Uh, and you'll notice that most cultures that have names that are very odd to an American ear will have an Americanized version of their name. I mean, everybody I know uh, that, that immigrated from you know China, Southeast Asia, they'd always have something. You know, like where I grew up, we had a huge um, Hmong and Laotian population. Yep. In San Joaquin Valley, California. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, Steve <laughs> yeah, is just north. You know. I know. <laughs> but but everybody would be like, you know, their real name would be, you know, Vin Van Tran, you know, some, you know, but they would they would use uh, John or Jim. Yeah. You know, or or you know Frank, <laughs> or they would have, I don't, and, and it, it, it's super common. Well, or you know, for better or worse, I mean, that's that's not that different than what happened with the people going through running through Ellis Island, right? Uh as they were running through, they would say what their name was and the and the the guy taking the the role or the census, so to speak, he would just look at him and say, Well, it's John now. Well that's how my that's actually how my family name is Korea in America. Um because uh, people always ask me how do you pronounce your last name? Well in America it's just Korea. You know, it's just phonetic. It's Korea. Yeah, in real life, it's Cohea, yeah. But but no one in America says that. So none of the American Portuguese people with my last name say that. We all say Korea. Yeah. Uh, and that's just because that's the Americanized version of it. And it's interesting because um, if you think about it, if you extrapolate this into science fiction cultures and stuff, if you're going to have a naming convention where it's very complex and hard for your reader to understand – do don't do an Americanized version, but do a short version of it, a, a memorable, repeatable version of it. That that way the reader can glom onto. So if it's Chandra Packers or Canucks or Crackers and Nakajatar, just call them you know Pax Pete. or Chan or something that that's that's something that your reader can like say, okay, I got this. Yeah. So to kind of go off of this as well, I want to talk about nicknames. Um. Because I think that, that what ends up happening a lot in fantasy and science fiction, especially when relating to, uh, to alien cultures or uh, you know, other eth ethnicities within the world, oftentimes the main characters you'll see, they start referring to other people by nicknames. Uh, I've done this in my own fiction. You've done this in your own fiction. And it, I see it in, 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 in this regard. Uh, referring to things, to people or cultures or beings that you don't understand. Uh, I, I also see it when 
your main character is looking at people who he doesn't know what their names are. Yep. Um, and so you start giving them, giving them nicknames. The character starts giving them nicknames based on, say, a specific characteristic or whatever. Yeah, I've used that in action scenes. We talk about that yeah. during the writing action ones. So if you have, like, your characters fighting, like, three thugs, you can't go through the action scene calling them thug number one, two, and three. That just doesn't work. And a lot of times, you know, when you're thrown in action scene, you don't know the, their names. They're, they've it's never not, been introduced. I was going to say, it's not like right before the action scene, they all sit down and they say, Hello. I am thug number one. You may call me John. I will be your assailant this evening. Uh, no, this is my compatriot thug number three. No. Who you may call him Juan Pablo. Um, you know, like oftentimes, I mean, that, that's just not how action scenes work. Although I, I do think that um, uh, in the next Tom Stranger, that should be one of the scenes. I could probably do that. Or I could make them wear name tags for helpful, you know, <laughs> for helpful descriptions. <laughs> thug number one. Hi, my name is John. <laughs> We had, uh, well, actually, it's funny though, because like in Son of the Black Sword with the introduction thing, oh, we very much have that in Son of the Black Sword for the action scenes. It's like, I am so and so, son of so and so, and I'm, you See, know. See, that's different. That's a cultural thing. And that is a cultural thing. Because you and I, we both, we both basically adore the game Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, love that game. And that's one of the actions you can take in the game is you walk up and, and you're like, I'm here, I'm so and so, and I'm here to. Here to like, yeah. you know, kill everyone. Ha ha. And then you duel half a dozen Mongols and it's awesome. And I think that that's interesting because I think that in that scenario, it's culturally appropriate to announce what your name is because your name is that important. And so I think that, I think that there are scenarios in which you can do that oh, yeah. for that very, for that very reason. Totally. Absolutely. And, 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 but if it's generic, if generic bad guys, and we've talked about this before in the action thing, we were like, well, I'm going to describe that guy, that guy with the big nose. That's just nose. He's nose. You know? Yeah. If there's, if there's a little tiny guy and a big guy, it's like shorty and big guy or whatever, you uh, know, or, or, or if he's, you know, horse face, that's horse face. <laughs> well, I was, I was telling you over the break, um, some of the character names in, uh, in my, my short story for, for werewolf cop, um, that story is currently called A Devil's Bargain. I, th I hope that name sticks. Anyway, I'll have to talk to the editor about it, Larry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. I haven't read any of these yet, yeah. by the way. Casey's compiling them still. So in that story, this, this very thing happens. The character gets assailed by a couple people. He doesn't know who they are, obviously. And, and so he just starts referring to them by a defining characteristic. One is called Mohawk and one is called, I think, Ram Horns or something like that. And so that's how he's referring to them, just because it's easy. It's easy to identify. It's easy to see. Um, now, addition to that, I think that there's a really cool power um, in, it, it's basically the military equivalent of the call sign uh, that, that we see in naming conventions. You see this with Steven Erickson. You see it with Glenn Cook. Yep. Um, I, we, we do a little bit of this in Servants of War, where we're, we, we basically call out something interesting about that character, whether it's something physical, physically visible, or it's a call sign of some sort that's been put on to them. Yeah, it's your... It, and call sign, it's like in... in um, <laughs> if you're playing Call of Duty or G.I. Joe, all the call signs are awesome. Yeah. Like everybody's got like a cool call sign. Well, actually, to be fair, Call of Duty actually plays with that a little bit because they got soap, roach, yeah. gas. You know, they got dumb names too, which is actually, if you've ever done the military guys, you know that's realistic. Most right. pilot nicknames aren't Cougar, Maverick, Merlin, Goose. No. They're, they're you know, uh, Puddles, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, and, Poop and you, Stain. I was going to say, you never get to make your own call sign. <laughs> they're stinky. You know, they're always like goofy, bad, you know, and in fact, I, I, I have a, a friend of mine, a uh, great guy, uh, retired after, you know, 30 years in the Air Force, and I found out what his call sign was. He never would tell anybody what his call sign was, and it's just funny. It's like, I can't say it on the on the air. You know the guy, <laughs> I'll tell you afterwards. But but because it's a sign to you, yeah. you know, and, and it's more like it's just given to you because like you do something embarrassing or stupid and it sticks with you forever. At the very end of, of my time in the... Uh uh, in the DOD world, my, uh, my own coworkers, some of them had been air force pilots and stuff. They gave me a name. 
Oh, real? What'd you get? It was Doctor No. <laughs> Because they say, hey, Steve, can you do... And before they could finish, I'd just say, no. No. I will always say... My default answer is no. And so they just started calling me Dr. No. And I'm, I'm going to say, I didn't mind that one that much. That was not bad. That's that not actually, bad. That would actually, that's a lot better than some of the stuff that you can get Yeah. Inside. Yeah. So anyway. But um, what I like about these is that it kind of goes back to what you were talking about the very first, at the very top of the episode. And that's that as you're using, say, the alien name generator or the fantasy name generator for the alien game, as soon as you saw something, as soon as you saw a name, you started asking yourself the questions. Well, well, why is this guy named Odin? Why? What characteristics does he have? Why did he get the name? Is Odin his real name or is that a call sign? And with the whole nickname thing, you know, I'm thinking... Um, you know, Steve Erickson or, or Glenn Cook, for example, you start thinking of the names that they have and you're going, well, why, why is the guy named Limper? Well, why is the guy named um, whatever he's named, right? And it, and it starts evoking a story automatically in your head. And I think that, and, and also it makes it, it makes it very easy to remember and it makes it very easy to to identify and point at and be like oh okay yeah this is this person doesn't matter what his actual name is it could be ja flar fanugan cthuloid well even generic names uh even a, even a pretty generic name can become potent if it's connected enough to the character that the character grows beyond it so like harry potter right everybody yeah. in the world knows harry potter now we've said a lot of names with the name harry in it oh yeah bosh yeah dresden dresden Potter. Oh, there you go. Well, Harry's a power. There you go, guys. Harry, that's your secret. Dirty Harry. Harry and Megan. Yeah. <laughs> Harry and the Hendersons. <laughs> I don't have any Harry, name characters named Harry. I think that's what's holding me back. That's probably it. Yeah. You'd be, a, you'd be an internet, you'd be a real author if you had I'd characters named Harry. I'd be a real author Harry. if I named, if it was Harry Pitt instead of Owen Pitt. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> no. That sounds awful. <laughs> Harry Pitt. Oh no, but names, names, guys. I mean, seriously, there's a lot of power in a name, and it's just got to be something that like it clicks and it fits. It either fits and it feels right for that character, or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, that's what the nicknames are for. Yeah. And uh, you know the way people refer to people. You guys can go nuts on this. Just don't, don't get don't get too creative for your own good. And don't go too overboard with wackiness uh, if it's a serious thing. You know, like when you're aliens or if all your elves <laughs> have unpronounceable, giant, goofy names. You know, keep in mind, because you're not writing for like a Welsh audience here. You're writing for an American audience. And if you're going to use Welsh names, be, you know, be careful with that because no, none of us are going to pronounce them right anyway. Because it's like it's spelled Mugwillian and it's like Jim. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the ones I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, so so I watch a lot of um, I watch a lot of, a lot of foreign crime shows, whether in like Swedish or Finnish or British, I guess is also foreign. But you know, I, I watch a lot of these, and like some of the ones that are that are like Irish or whatever, or Welsh. I'm like that. That's Siobhan. Yeah, yeah. It's um... S H O B. I don't know. And I'm I'm just going. I, I don't understand this. I barely speak English. How am I supposed to know all these other things? Uh, yeah, but, keep in but mind. Think about that. Though. American audience is gonna yeah. is gonna distill that down into something manageable for their brains. <laughs> you know, that's how it is. Now, th all this is good. All this is important. But um, I have an idea, Larry, of of kind of a little piece of homework, a little exercise that we can that, that these that our folks can do, our good listeners can do. I want you to go to that fantasy name generator, put in some ethnicities, whatever. We we'll have a section for real names. Yeah, in real names, not like whatever the fake ones are that we can't pronounce. Put in a couple of them and think about what Larry was talking about at the top of the episode. How as soon as he put in a couple names, they would come up and, and they would immediately evoke some sort of small story, some sort of background. So I want you to go through, generate a handful, maybe six. Out of those six, a couple of them, at least two, should evoke just something, should spark something in your imagination. 
I want you to write just a little background on that character. Yeah. And then start thinking about like, what kind of world would you, in your voice, set them in? What would you do? Yeah, I think, and that's a great little storytelling thing. And and like I said, I did 20 of them. And each one, as I did it, like, I would flip through several pages and the name would jump out at me and be like, this guy is is a space trucker. (laughs) That is a space trucker name right there. Yeah. He, he has on his, uh, he has on his trucker hat, you know, it's, it's awfully high brimmed, has a leather patch on the front. He's well, some, half shaven. Some of these I was actually interesting cause like, like, the, like, uh, and then, uh, different people would have different visions and like, it's like they would grab a character, but they would immediately start playing it in some way based upon the name. And we had, uh. I actually cheated too because I used a lot of and, uh, androgynous names where it could be played as a male or a mm-hmm. female depending on who was playing them or how yeah. they wanted to play it. Uh, like like uh, you know, Dave was playing somebody named Nick, yeah, but it was it could be Nicole, yeah, and uh, but Dave just took it and, ran, and Dave went hippie, hippie dippy, yeah, you know, going to have a ponytail and laid back and you know gets face hugged while trying to fix the reactor, yeah. <laughs> It was a bad day for that guy. <laughs> yeah, he died horribly. But you know, but but you get these names and, and and do what Steve said. Go out there, pick some names, put them together, and just see what you guys come up with. Then come up with a paragraph of like, who is this person? Yeah, and then you know, I wouldn't be surprised, Larry, if in doing some of this exercise, they come up with a couple characters who they kind of start falling in love with a little bit. Yeah. And then think back to some of our earlier exercises where we were talking about point of view, whether first person or whatever. And, and we're going to do a third person episode coming up. Think about some of those previous exercises that we've had you do and take this character who you've written a little teeny biography about and start throwing them into some of those old exercises yeah. and see what happens. I think you're going to, I think you're going to have some fun results. You know, one thing we didn't say during the episode, but uh, people are asking, where do you get names from? Oh, geez, wherever. Yeah, wherever. Um, the phone book. <laughs> uh, remember, remember when we were working together and I would get I would get all these random spam emails? Oh, yeah. And so I started looking at the names and I started pulling the names and throwing them onto a spreadsheet. I'm like, oh, this is going to be a great name for a dystopian novel. Yeah, it's just sometimes it was like a name that just screams out at you. Like like our corporate guy was uh, Archer King was yeah. one of the names of the I was like, So I saw Archer King and I was like, that is the most corporate dirtbag name I have ever seen. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. That's the Wayland Utani representative yeah. right there, you know. <laughs> or, um, you know, or, or I'll be watching, uh, I'll be watching shows and I'll see the way that a name is spelled. I'll just go, oh, well, this, this actually just happened to me yesterday. Um, I, I was watching a, a Finnish crime show, and I saw the way this name was spelled, and I went, I'm going to switch those P's for C's. And that's going to be a really cool name for a detective in a fantasy series. Like, that's cool. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's like we always talk about with ideas. They're kind of a dime a dozen. Mm-hmm. You can find them anywhere. Same with names. Yeah. You just ha- With names, though, you just kind of need to... Mix and match and kind of try them on like a pair of shoes. See, yeah. see how they fit. They either click or they don't. Yeah. And if they click, run with it. Yeah. All right. That's all the time we have for you today. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Um, as always, we're very appreciative of your support. We love you all very much. Uh, most of you. And uh, thank you so much for listening to us. Spread the good word. Um, this is the Writer Dojo, and we'll see you on the next one. Writer Dojo is Steve Diamond and Larry Correa, produced by Jack Wilder and Baron Hare Studios. Theme song, Word Mercenaries, by Craig Nibo. New episodes come out every Wednesday wherever you stream your content. If you enjoyed this podcast, you can help support us by going to anchor.fm slash writer dojo, by leaving a five-star rating and review, and by helping to spread the word. To advertise on the Writer Dojo, email ads at writerdojo.com. All questions and comments can be emailed to questions at writerdojo.com. That is the most corporate dirtbag name I have ever seen. Oh my gosh.